A hen had suddenly fallen to the ground, and when Vivi fell to her knees and cradled a hen's head in her lap, she touched his forehead and found it scorching hot. Worried, she thought about summoning Professor Gina, but a hen held her hand and pleaded with her not to go anywhere. He asked her to stay with him, prompting Vivi to inquire about his condition. She questioned why he hadn't sought proper medical attention and why he was keeping his ailment a secret from his clan, the Panther's clan. Assisting him to the bed, she urged him to call her whenever he needed. Filled with concern, she swiftly fetched a blanket to provide comfort for a hen. However, as she covered him, she realized his fever had spiked even higher. Pondering what to do next, she contemplated removing his heavy clothes to help cool him down. Gently, she began to take off his coat and unbutton his shirt, intending to ease his discomfort. Unexpectedly, amidst his discomfort, he began to flirt with her playfully, catching her off guard. Seeing him, someone typically composed, in such visible agony struck her deeply. Her heart went out to him, and the sight of his suffering even brought tears to her eyes. In her concern, she considered using her pheromones to soothe him, even if it meant risking her transformation back into a rabbit. Fueled by her instincts, she approached him, recognizing that the allure of this enigmatic red-eyed figure was irresistible. She thought of biting his neck to transfer her healing pheromones. However, her lack of canine teeth hindered her efforts. In a surprising turn of events, a hen firmly grasped her arm, pulling her close to him. The atmosphere between them shifted, and he leaned in, capturing her lips in a deep and passionate kiss and unexpected response to her gesture. The next morning, Vivi woke up and found herself still in human form. She checked a hen's condition, relieved to find his body temperature had returned to normal. However, her gaze landed on the bite marks on his neck. Filled with shock and fear, she tried to heal the wounds. As a hen woke up, he teasingly referred to her actions from the previous night. During breakfast, a hen began questioning Vivi about her journey in the rabbit territory, displaying signs of jealousy when she mentioned her acquaintance with Manians. In the midst of their conversation, Evren entered to inform a hen about an urgent meeting. Although a hen seemed dismissive as he exclaimed that he was busy with Miss Rabbit, but he attended the meeting due to the chief's insistence. The meeting revolved around investigating an uninvited guest at a ball and a subsequent fire that had erupted. The discussion centered on the appearance of a black panther named Ash, who had entered their territory with Manians. The meeting's most significant topic concerned was a lady rabbit. Upon hearing about her both a hen and Manians demanded to know the identity of the witness who had information about her. The witness, Lady Avean, delivered information only on one condition that her identity must remain concealed. The meeting concluded with the revelation that the mysterious rabbit was familiar to both a hen and Manians. Manians provocatively referred to Vivi as a ballet dancer, and both of the heirs fell into the seduction of that dancer, igniting a heated argument between him and a hen. The meeting ultimately concluded with the decision to treat Vivi as a special guest until the source of the fire was determined. In the evening, as a hen and Russell engaged in their playful antics within the room, Vivi couldn't help but find their interactions heartwarming, and a hen's playful demeanor truly captivating. However, amid the smiles and laughter, a shadow of melancholy crept over her. Thoughts of a hen's impending marriage to a girl of noble birth loomed large in her mind. Sadly, she knew she wouldn't be the one standing beside him at the altar. The mere notion of him belonging to someone else was a bitter pill for her heart to swallow. A hen interrupting her from her wild thoughts and resting his head gently on her shoulder, he conveyed a silent reassurance that transcended words. And then, with a tender and unexpected gesture, he enveloped her in a warm embrace from behind. His voice, sincere and heartfelt, pierced through her internal turmoil as he implored her not to vanish from his life without a trace. Next day, Vivi and Ash sat on the floor, their heads resting on the sofa, seemingly displeased with the decision to return to the Black Panther's territory, while a hen read a newspaper. Vivi informed a hen that her purpose was to bid farewell to Professor Gina and Russell. Yet, her real intention was to slip away from the bustling surroundings. Her effort, however, was swiftly halted by Manians himself. He stood before her, preventing her escape and sharing a sobering truth should she return to the Panther's territory. Their encounters would become few and far between. 
He confessed his desire to rescue her if she were cast out into the lion's territory, rather than the panthers. This revelation prompted her departure, but he offered his assistance, believing she didn't need to be with such a dangerous devil. Vivi countered, stating that Ahin needed her more than she needed him, recalling his role in saving her in the forest. Amidst their conversation, Quinn, the messenger bird arrived in his human form. He was assigned as Vivi's protector. He guided her to a carriage outside, where Ash and Evren awaited her. As Ahin approached the carriage, he assured Vivi that he would meet her in the rabbit territory the following day, explaining that he had important matters to attend to. On their journey, just as they were about to enter the Black Panther's territory, the carriage abruptly halted. Despite the carriage being surrounded by attackers, Evren and Quinn remained in the carriage with calm expressions, leaving Vivi surprised by their carelessness. Someone suddenly locked the door from the outside, and when she attempted to peer out of the window, Evren prevented her from doing so. Vivi thought that the last attack occurred when a hen was present in the carriage but in the current attack the target was anonymous to her. The attacker was targeting her, and she began to realize that it could be someone who wanted an advantage from her. When the real culprit came to her mind, her mother was likely behind this. With determination, she shattered the window, and when Evren and Quinn came forward to stop her, she used her pheromones on them causing them to fall unconscious instantly. Then she fled the carriage, bringing Ash with her. The assault had been arranged by rabbit hybrids, with Lady Avean orchestrating the attack. But out of nowhere, Ahin appeared, defeating the attackers. She asked how dared he confronted and harm a noble woman like her, to which he cunningly responded that she won't be a noble woman anymore. He revealed that several headmasters and their children were involved in serious crimes, and House Levian was destined for downfall. Before explaining further, he questioned Avean about the drug she gave to Vivi. She disclosed that she had been given a special medicine to Vivi since the age of four. And because of the side effects of that medicine Vivi couldn't transform into a human. He revealed that the fire during the ball had originated from a room containing important documents, implying the involvement of the Levian headmaster, and also that the documents had successfully been transferred to a safe place back then. He also revealed that the chief had promised him heads of Lady Avean and Lord Ravian in exchange for information about the drugs. Vivi in her rabbit form listened to all the conversation between them, and unable to endure the pain her mother had caused her, she signaled a hen to return home. The next day, Vivi had been reading the newspaper from the rabbit territory, an article about rumors of a love triangle between a black panther, a lion, and a rabbit had been published. It spoke of a beautiful dancer caught between the affections of two rivals, a hen grace and run manians. After reading, Vivi tore the newspaper into pieces. Just then, a hen entered, and she began to think about the moment when he had confronted Avean and revealed his feelings for her and told her that she was the mother of a girl he liked. Vivi found herself captivated by Ahin's charm and gave him a subtle, enticing gesture. That day, Valence suggested that Vivi learn and gain control over her pheromones from a tutor. The best candidate, in her opinion, was Lillian Fayant, Ahin's grandfather. Before their first lesson, Lillian, considering the fact that Miss Rabbit was an avid reader, quizzed her with tough academic questions to assess her abilities. Vivi answered confidently and correctly. Astonished by her quick-wittedness, Lillian recognized her as a genius. The following day, she noticed that everyone in the residence was dressed in black, even a hen was behaving strangely. After inquiring with the workers, she learned that it was the death anniversary of Edith Grace, a hen's father, who had succumbed to a chronic illness. Curious about the disease and a hen's connection to it, she was determined to know the real truth behind all the happenings so she experimented by releasing pheromones in herself and successfully transforming into a human. For now, she didn't need pheromones of anyone to help her transform, she could do it herself. She immediately sought out Ahin's grandfather without informing anyone, running out of the mansion. She met Lillian in the greenhouse. She asked him if he was aware of her healing pheromones, to which he admitted that she had unknowingly treated his wounds when he first came to the mansion. He became her teacher to help her learn to control her abilities and the healing pheromones. He explained Edith's weakness that had rendered him bedridden and unable to take the pheromones of the ruling class. Lillian believed that Ahin had inherited more from Valence than Edith, explaining his resilience. But Vivi was stressed by finding the certainty because deep down, only she knew the truth about Ahin's seizures. Lillian confessed that he couldn't afford to lose his loved one again. In the mansion, 
Ahin was worried about Vivi and her sudden transformation into a human. He searched for her, pacing through the palace with concern, and worried about the endless tiredness that day would bring to him. He eventually found her beneath a table, her head buried in her lap, and she was scratching her hand. Uncertain of what had happened, he asked her to stop scratching and crying. This triggered an outpour of questions from Vivi, who was continuously crying. She questioned why he hadn't shared his seizures with anyone, and why he was enduring all the pain himself. Ahin, with an expressionless face, asked her what she would do if she knew everything. He moved closer as if to bite her neck, but she pushed him away, admitting her fear of him. With nothing more to say, he started to leave, but she held his hand, stopping him. Determined, she offered her help using her healing pheromones to stabilize his seizures. But Ahin brushed her off by saying that she couldn't breathe properly in front of him, then how would she be able to help? He realized earlier that using pheromones on him could cause her a lot of pain, and he couldn't afford to see her in pain. Overwhelmed, Vivi confessed her offer, and was determined to help even if he agreed to it or not. She outpoured her anger and frustration on him, and didn't step back from facing the red-eyed devil. Ahin, in disbelief, touched her, kissed her hand and forehead, and pulled her onto his lap, assuring her that his rabbit would always be there for him, not leaving his side. She, while blushing and couldn't stand the charm of this beast, starts to leave but he stopped her and made that moment special for both. During lunch, Lillian suggested that Vivi could be adopted by a decent family, given the upcoming media frenzy due to Ahin's approaching birthday. Ahin began to inquire about how Valence and his grandfather had taught her to expertly aim and hit targets with her pheromones. Not getting a positive response from either side, his suspicion turned to run manians. In her room, Vivi pondered the best gift for Ahin's birthday and awaited his response to her question about when his pheromone seizures had started. She heard someone entering the room and turned to see Ahin in his animal form, a massive black panther. He behaved oddly, ignoring her presence, and headed for the bed, where he closed his eyes. Watching him laying peacefully, she wondered if it was not a pheromone attack then what else was bothering him. She attempted to touch his tail but he moved it away, indicating his displeasure towards her and suggesting that she was a deceitful rabbit. Realizing his behavior was likely due to Run, she asked if his mood was influenced by the dance signal she had once given to Run, making him even more jealous as he hadn't known about it. To soothe him, she promised to dance for him in her rabbit form. Surprisingly, Ahin seemed okay with the idea. The next day, Run received a letter from Ahin, in which he openly threatened him not to attend his birthday or face dire consequences. Reston advised against going, but Leona Manian's Run's sister intervened. She lifted both of them with her strong hands, instructing Run to steal the nymph of gossip, the rabbit, and promising to handle the madman of the Grace family. In the Grace residence, Ahin got ready to leave, finally answering Vivi's question. He revealed that he had been 16 when he experienced his first pheromone attack. He was younger than his father had been when he experienced his first attack at the age of 18. To assist Ahin with his seizures, Vivi, in her rabbit form, enthusiastically attended classes to learn more about healing pheromones. She interviewed Ril Yuan and others in the mansion to gather information about the red-eyed devil. Afterward, she approached Valence who disclosed that Ahin had confided in her about his pheromone seizures. She told her that although Ahin's father refrained from using pheromones due to their challenging nature, Ahin had been grappling with them since childhood. Despite the risk of seizures, he had no choice but to employ his pheromones given his current position. Ahin was the first one to see his father closing his eyes forever, and she believed that she was losing him the same way she had lost his father. Vivi drifted off to sleep there, just as Ahin entered, revealing his plan to visit the bear territory after his birthday. He had uncovered a secret from 300 years ago and learned of someone possessing domination pheromones. On the day of the Lion Clan's arrival, Lillian strolled contentedly through the garden, pleased with his new disciple who had taken the Grace family under her first paw. In the midst of this, Ezra, Run's grandfather, arrived holding a newspaper and inquired about the gossip article concerning Run, a hen and a dancer and rumors. Both men pretended their grandsons were not pursuing a dancer. Despite the warning, Run ventured into the Grace residence hesitantly, lost in his thoughts about how he could encounter her, when he came across Vivi and her panthers in the garden. Concerned for her well-being he asked her about her health and how she had been, but Ahin suddenly entered the scene out of nowhere, asserting that she would be far better if Run were no longer alive. 
Caught between two heirs from different clans, the young rabbit tried to quell the rising conflict. However, their exchange of heated words escalated, and despite her efforts, she couldn't pacify them. Eventually, she fled the scene with both of them calling after her, leaving Ezra bewildered at the sight of two formidable men being rattled by a baby rabbit. Lillian and Ezra sat at the dining table with Vivi, with Ezra boasting about his clan and describing his determined yet seemingly lazy grandson. He praised Run's resolve and the light that shone in his dignified eyes. Suddenly, Ezra sensed a presence outside the window, but Lillian dismissed his warning. Using his pheromones to display his strength, Ezra shattered the window glass and discovered Run on the other side, forced to take that route due to a hen's panthers guarding the door. Meanwhile, in the study room, a hen and Evren discussed the prevailing topic in the Grace Mansion, Vivi. Evren jokingly suggested that he could keep Miss Rabbit in his pocket, leading to a hen's unexpected jealousy and a swift reminder to watch his words. Quinn, the messenger bird, then arrived, updating a hen on Vivi's whereabouts, noting that she was in the company of two elderly men. This news heightened Ahin's anxiety, particularly since his grandfather remained unaware of Vivi's condition after exposure to pheromones. Ahin worried that the lion's grandfather had a habit of showing off his power and strength and he might display his strength and release pheromones, exacerbating the situation. In the dining hall, Vivi found herself facing the exact problem Ahin had anticipated and dreaded. Struggling to maintain composure, she covered her mouth, torn between the two formidable men. Finding solace in Run's presence, she leaped towards him. Meeting her gaze, Run understood her unspoken need and smiled, allowing her to proceed to a hen. Running past the servants in the hallway, Vivi raced towards a hen, determined not to falter. Her wish to see a hen was swiftly granted as he approached her, holding a white cloth. She signaled her requirement for feranium, which he provided. With minimal discomfort, she transformed into her human form while he wrapped her in his arms and placed her safely in his lap. With her head resting on his shoulder, Vivi asked Ahin how he had sensed her distress and hurried to her aid. Fondly, he expressed that he would always come running to her, and she was the one who couldn't know about it. Lost in each other's gaze, they inched closer for a kiss, their eyes closing, only to be interrupted by Mimi's entrance. Mimi delivered clothing for Vivi, leaving them both embarrassed. Ahin stood outside the door, his mind consumed by thoughts of Vivi's beautiful eyes her face, and her speech impediment. She held him captive, driving him to the brink of his restraint. Dressed in a stunning blue dress, she emerged from the room, asking if he had waited long, a gesture that sent shivers down his spine. The words he had intended to say slipped his mind. He offered his hand to her, inviting her to accompany him to the banquet. Hand in hand, they strolled together, pausing before entering the hall. Curious about a birthday gift for a hen, Vivi inquired about his desires. Playfully, Ahin suggested there were numerous things she could offer him, not leaving the house after a fight, avoiding Evren's pocket or Mimi's room, remaining faithful to him, and returning to the Grace Mansion when in human form. Vivi halted him, deeming these requests enough. She expressed her wish to accompany him to the bear territory, but Ahin brushed off her words with a simple no undeterred. She reasoned that she could aid him during any seizures he might experience while away. She then thought of a trick. She pretended to fall and a hen just arrived in time to catch her, and to his surprise, she clung to him tightly, refusing to let go, threatening to run away if he refused her plea. Vivi revealed the extent of her dedication, her commitment to mastering healing pheromones solely for a hen. Faced with her unwavering determination, a hen admitted his true concern, that her proximity triggered an urge within him to bite her neck due to the insufficient effect of her pheromones. Exhausted. He pondered how he would manage without her if anything happened to her. Unfazed, Vivi asserted her lack of fear and willingness to endure the bite if it was for him. Entranced by her words, Ahin succumbed to his desire and finally bit her neck. The following day, Valence's attention was drawn to the scarf adorning Vivi's neck, wondering if it was a modern fashion choice. Vivi visited Lady Valence and Lillian to explain her inability to attend Ahin's birthday party due to her fear of wild beasts. Under the cover of night, amidst the lively banquet gathering, Vivi and her faithful companions Mimi, Ash, and Bara engaged in a covert escapade. Their mission, a heartfelt birthday surprise for a hen, each step resonating with anticipation. As they navigated the palace's concealed corridors, an unexpected sight halted them a seemingly lifeless red fox. Vivi sought refuge behind Mimi, 
but soon they realized the fox still breathed, though unconscious. A sense of mystery and concern intertwined in the air. Drawing closer, Vivi's eyes widened with recognition it was Ayla, the fox beast lady encountered during her transformation at the ball. Memories surged forth, tugging at her heart. Guided by Mimi's steady presence, they carried Ayla to an infirmary. Reston arrived at the Grace residence in search of his lord, Run Manions. He observed Evern clearing a path, instructing servants to step back, and tampering with the banquet cake. He witnessed Evren pulling something from his pocket and adding it to the cake possibly poison or a deadly substance. Startled, he called out to Evren, approaching him. As he drew near, he noticed a small rabbit figurine atop the cake. Attempting to remove it, he was halted by Evren, who declared that the Grace family now followed Miss Rabbit's command, marking the air of pause. The fox had now adopted her human form, the enchanting Lady Vivi had first seen at the Grace Ball. Inquisitive, the lady questioned how a baby rabbit could transform into a fully grown adult. She removed Vivi's scarf, revealing a bandaged scar. Removing the bandage unveiled something significant scars resembling flowers on her neck. This might signal her impending permanent transformation into a human, a prospect that thrilled her. Eager to share the news with a hen, Vivi's thoughts were interrupted by the fox's revelation that she coveted Miss Rabbit even more than a hen. Vivi's retort expressed her firm claim over a hen, proclaiming him hers alone. The door pounded suddenly, and as Mimi opened it, Run, in his lion form, entered the room, leaving Vivi frightened, prompting her to flee. Yuan witnessed the successive commotion of Vivi and her companions, reporting to Evren, who informed a hen that Vivi was having an affair with the fox and was on the run. Though a hen initially dismissed it, Evren disclosed that Vivi had fled with the lion, causing a hen to flush with anger. Separated by glass walls, Vivi and the lion cross paths. Run's disappointment lingered, as he wondered why he couldn't see her without any barriers. He pondered that he had been there when she first transformed into a human, wore her first dress, and danced for the first time. He questioned his mischance now. Why had he not had more time with her? Born as Lord Manions, he understood the boundaries of his desires, struggling with his emotions and uncertain of how to win her heart. Sensing his melancholy, Vivi inquired if he was okay or needed anything. Then, a thought struck her a hen's upcoming birthday. Swiftly, she collected flowers, crafting a bouquet. Run returned, now in human form, sitting by her side. Run plastered a smile on his face, and confessed his inability to claim her heart. Just then she opened her mouth to confess her love for a hen, but unable to hear such words, Run stopped her. He then shared his plan to leave for the lion territory after the banquet. His feelings surpassed mere infatuation. He fashioned a flower crown for her, acknowledging his respect for her life's rhythm. Gently placing a flower in his hair, which Vivi gave to him, he departed silently. Banyans left the greenhouse. He encountered a hen, armed with a horse and sword, ready to confront a lion he intended to kill. Manions tried to explain that he had been the first to witness Vivi's initial transformation into a human, but Ahin disregarded his lion form and proceeded directly to the greenhouse. Inside, he found Vivi sitting amidst flowers, initially frowning at his arrival. She then handed him a bouquet, wishing him a happy birthday. Unable to resist, Ahin felt an unexpected fondness for her. Outside, Valence and Lillian approached the greenhouse with intentions of reprimanding Vivi for her recklessness. However, the sight that greeted them left them astounded. Ahin and Vivi were seated beside each other, engaged in an affectionate conversation. Both Valence and Lillian blushed upon witnessing the scene, quickly departing. Ahin noticed the crown on her head and asked if it was the lion's doing. He suggested removing it. She attempted to convey something to him but he refused to listen and inquired why she had covered her neck. He jokingly mentioned giving her a mark on her cheek next time so that she couldn't conceal it. Despite her attempts to speak, she finally pushed him back, causing the flowers in his hand to scatter, and then she crawled over him. Determinedly, she extended her wishes and kissed him deeply for the first time, confessing her affection. She assured him that she wouldn't betray him again. His eyes widened as he beheld a transformed Vivi. Breaking his gaze, he playfully rolled and moved atop her, capturing her lips and remarking that the kiss had been too short. She responded by returning his kiss, and in that moment, they shared a profound connection. They then retreated to their bedroom chambers, the memory of the shared experience lingering between them. Inquiring about the bear territory, 
Ahin attempted to dissuade Vivi by describing the dangerous creatures that resided there. Unworried, she persisted, and Ahin eventually agreed to accompany her. Observing her enthusiasm, he questioned her affinity for bears, to which she confessed her preference for black panthers. He reached for her hair, inhaling its scent, but abruptly halted, his attention diverted. In the hallway, Ash and Bara exhibited strange behavior, urging Everin to guide them to Ahin's chambers. Everin's attempts to restrain them proved futile as they continued their pursuit of Ahin's room. Ahin stopped suddenly, like he remembered something important. He was planning to go to the office for a bit, but Vivi wasn't on board with the idea. She came up behind him and hugged him, feeling his heartbeat racing. Wondering if she was still scared of him, he asked, and she replied that she wasn't afraid anymore. Pulling away gently, he mentioned that they couldn't stay like that all night because it would delay his return. Vivi was eager to tell him about the flower scar on her neck, but then something strange happened. A jolt of electricity seemed to pass through Ahin's heart, and his pheromones went haywire. He quickly moved her away, warning her not to get any closer. It was as if something unexpected had shaken him, leaving her more surprised than ever. What had suddenly happened to the red-eyed devil? What was he up to? Why did he behave like that? 